What I have here is an LG dishwasher, model LDF5545ST, and it's making a bit of a noise, something like this. It started out a much fainter noise. It has gotten much louder, to the point it's near unbearable. It kind of sounded like a bearing going bad when it started, and it still sounds like a bad bearing. Watching it for a bit reveals the noise must be coming from the circulating pump. When it's not moving water, it's not making any noise. So let me see what kind of parts I'm going to be dealing with. So going to LGparts.com and looking at the exploded view, it turns out the pump and motor are all one assembly. The one with the 10 year warranty, I do believe. Of course, the warranty is just for the part and not the labor. So list price for the pump is ridiculous but now I have a part number to look for. But if I can't find it for a good price, it might end up being cheaper to try and get it fixed under warranty. The dishwasher is right at six years old. This was about the best price I saw. I still feel that this is a bit overpriced, but cheaper than a new dishwasher, so I'm going to give it a try. Of course, have to disconnect the power and water from the dishwasher, and depending on the drain hose, may have to disconnect that as well. Here, the dishwasher is laying on its back. One screw holds the bottom cover panel on. Removing that will allow access to the pump. Here's the culprit. Well, I'm pretty sure it's the problem. I'm fixing to find out. There are two hose connections on the left side of the pump. The thermistor connector is right down here. There's a tie holding the wires that go to the thermistor. The motor power connector is right here. The heater connectors are here on the bottom of the pump. Back behind the heater wires, there is a ground wire attached to the pump frame by a screw. And the pump is held in place by these two rubber straps here. The heater connectors are held on quite tight. Looks like some very nice high quality connectors. The bottom hose clamp moves away from the pump. It won't move very far as it's on a T-shaped pipe. The top hose clamp moves toward the pump. The tie holding the wire bundle is just a wire twist tie, so easy to undo. The connector for the thermistor has a clip that has to be pushed in to release the connector. The motor power connector has small locking tabs at each end. The clips have to be pushed in to release the tabs. The end with the three wires has the connector held very tightly. It takes quite a bit to get it loose. I just don't want to break the locking tabs. The rubber straps just pull off of the plastic pins sticking out of the pump. Once the straps are removed, then can pull the pump loose from the hose connections. A little bit of water might spill out, so may want to put a towel under the hoses. The last thing holding the pump in is the ground wire. It just has to be unscrewed. And it's out. That wasn't bad. Really a nice layout by LG here. Well, it looks like an OEM part. Pump looks identical. Can see the pump and motor are isolated from everything else by rubber pieces. Going that extra mile to try and isolate pump noise from the cabinet. Very nice. Of course, the ground wire is the first thing to put back and it's very important for safety. That way if the motor were to short out, it would blow a fuse and not become a shock hazard. Next, we'll get the hose connections on. They slide on pretty easy. Just a bit of wiggling seems to move them into position. Then the rubber straps go onto the plastic pins on the pump. Just have to stretch them a bit and push them onto the pins.
then the hose clamps are put back in place. They are not that heavy duty of clamps, so just some small pliers works quite well. There's not a lot of hose clamp area, so we want to make sure the hoses are bumping up against the plastic stops. Now for the electrical connections. The motor power connector pushes on. It's a pretty tight connector. The heater wires. Those are some of the most solid feeling spade connectors I've felt. I'll put the wire tie back in place and wrap the thermistor wires around the wiring harness. Then the thermistor connector is put back together. And then I will double check all the connections. And here's a very good reason for me to do that. The connector felt like it clicked when I pushed it on, but from looking at it, it's obvious it's not fully in place. Okay, that's much better. If that connector were to work loose, it could very well damage the drive board. With my eyesight not near as good as it used to be, I do find double checking things saves me a bit of grief. I'll put the bottom cover back in place and it should be ready to wash again. Didn't seem to have any water leaks, so that's good. And now can't really hear the pump running, just hear the water spraying on the cabinet the way it used to be. Seems to be working well. It's a very easy pump to replace. I'll give good marks to LG for that. The pump is too expensive? No doubt about that. I feel $120 would be a much more reasonable price for it. It's the best cleaning dishwasher I've ever had, so it's worth spending a bit of money on. And the price of the pump is way less than a new dishwasher. Well, at least if don't buy the pump directly from LG. From the noise, I'm pretty sure a bearing is going bad. And maybe it might be possible to just replace the bearing, making for a very cheap repair. Seems to be two screws holding the pump to the motor. Well, it's loose, but not pulling apart. Let me see if the pump will come apart. Looks like two halves of the pump are held together by plastic clips. Yep, two halves just have to be turned a little bit to clear the tabs. Then pull the halves apart. Not a lot of mineral buildup, considering six years of running on well water. Alright, a screw holding the impeller on. Oh, left hand threads, that makes sense. There is definitely a bad bearing. That feels horrible. Oh, that's not good. A bit of water around the shaft. And this thing has been setting uh, for a few days. Yeah, quite a bit of water. So I'm going to guess it's the top bearing that is bad. Water getting in a bearing is just not good for it. So probably the seal in the pump has gone bad, letting water get to the bearing. And that has caused the failure. Probably the reason LG only has a pump part number for the entire pump motor assembly. And unfortunately the motor is held together with some kind of rivets, so this is not going to be as simple as finding and replacing a bearing. And to top it all off, the shaft is really scarred where the seal has been running on it. So even if I can find a replacement seal and a new bearing, how long could it even last with that much damage on the motor shaft? I'm going to say trying to repair the motor is going to be a waste of time. Get all the parts and maybe get six months out of it. Let me pull it all apart and see what the insides look like. First the seal. Let me see if I can pry it out. 
Now if I thought this could be repaired, I would be a lot more gentle with removing this seal. Markings on it are DTCL, 8, 26, 8, 11, and a 4F. Very hard to see. The numbers 8, 26, 8, 11 are almost certainly millimeters. As the shaft size is 8 millimeters, the OD of the seal is 26 millimeters, the height of the press in part of the seal is 8 millimeters, and the shaft OD part of the seal is 11 millimeters. This is not the kind of seal I would expect to last 10 years, not by a long shot. Well, the motor is not made to be taken apart. I'm just going to drill out the rivets. Steel rivets and pretty thick ones. Again, if I thought this was repairable, I would be a lot more careful pulling it apart. Drive the rivets out of the back. They don't drive all the way out of the motor. Then I'll just pry it apart. Wow, those are some stout rivets. They would have to be cut off to get them completely out of the motor to replace them with screws. Let me see, I'm sure it's the top bearing. Yep, the one water got to. I'll put the screw back in the shaft and see if the bearing and shaft will come out of the case. It's not budging. Maybe it's pressed in that tight or maybe it's because of the water. I'm going to put some PB Blaster on it and let it set for a day or so. It's probably rusted in place. Okay, overnight setting with the PB Blaster seemed to do the trick, except the bearing is still in the cover. Well, an NSK bearing. Number is 608D16 same bearing that is on the other end of the motor. Let's see what the insides of it look like. Let me get the seal off. That's not a good look for inside of the seal. I'll pry the cage out. Well, not much prying, just a plastic cage. Obviously a mixture of rust and grease in the bearing. Yeah, that's a mess. Bearing probably would have lasted many more years if water hadn't gotten to it. Very sad. The seal and the bearing could be replaced. But here's the deal breaker. The motor shaft. It is so rough where the seal has been rubbing. There's no way a seal is going to last any time at all running on that. It's just all chewed up. The motor looks like a very well built motor. I'm sure it could last 20 years plus. The pump is nicely built, except for the seal. I think the seal is just a double lip seal, and sealing water, I don't think it could ever last 10 years. Probably wouldn't last 10 years sealing oil, though it might. Kinda makes me wonder if LG had planned to sell the motor and pump separately, since the warranty says 10 years on the motor. But with the seal destroying the motor shaft, can't just replace the pump. Repair wouldn't last any time at all, and that would make for some very unhappy customers. Maybe that is why the motor pump assembly is so expensive. LG's having to replace a lot of them, and they're trying to recover some of the expense. Really a shame. A little more effort put into the pump seal, and it could have lasted 10 years. Thank you for watching.